this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time. Oh, this is a this is a good one right here. This is the late 2016 15-inch MacBook Pro here, the one with the touch bar. And over here we have the Surface Book with performance space. That's the one with the NVIDIA GTX 965M graphics inside and Core i7. So two of the hottest and two of the most expensive and two of the best-made laptop or laptop-ish products, in the case of the service book, that you can actually buy right now. So, and their price is the same, too, for starting prices, and they both get pretty expensive if you spec them out. How do you decide? We're going to find out now. Now, with both of these, you're paying for high-end design materials and just, honestly, the best looks on the marketplace. Both of these start at $23.99. They're both equally as expensive. So there's that. And of course, you can configure them and make them even more expensive if you add uh, upgrades like bigger SSDs, more RAM in the case of the Surface Book, and so on. So with the Mac, beautiful design right here. What you're paying for is, well, their design prowess, the, the great materials here. Every Mac is always well-built, rigid, nicely put together, and, and all that sort of thing. And it's the price of admission to play in Mac OS X, which is a lovely operating system. And, well, the price of admission is getting awfully high these days. But uh, there's the appeal. You like Mac OS better, this is what you're going to buy. And, and process, as long as you can afford it, you're getting a really well-made, lovely machine. Now, with the Surface Book, what you're paying for, and this is important. Now, I know a lot of people just buy Surface Books because they think it's the best laptop that they can get in Windows world. And, hey, that's, that's cool, too, if you got the money and you want to do that. But... What you're paying for is, well, number one, also beautiful design, vapor magnesium casing, the unique fulcrum hinge, the, the little hinge that snakes along on the side here, the muscle wire that turns this into a tablet. You're, you're paying for the fact that you can actually take this apart and boom, you can make it a tablet. You're paying for the fact that it has this pen included in the box. So you have an active digitizer, you have a pen. I edit photographs. Many of you know I'm a photographer. I love the pen for that, but I also love to draw and paint digitally. So I can do stuff like this, which is for me, wow. It, it's really fun. It's really exciting. And with the Mac, if I want to do that, I'm still stuck in old fashioned land using a USB tablet, drawing on the tablet while looking at the screen and trying to get those two together in my brain. This is the old way. I no, I refuse. I don't do this anymore. No, 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 thanks. I could get a, a Wacom Cintiq companion display where I could draw on the display and plug it into the Mac, but that is also a very expensive product on top of a very expensive Mac. You know, we're talking 1500 bucks or more for a decent sized display. So for those of you who are into art design and even editing your photos, there's an obvious appeal here to being able to do this. If none of that is for you, then you may not need to consider something like the Surface Book. Again, unless you just think it's a really well made very cool laptop image, which is pretty fast. It is all those things. Now, another reason you're paying a lot for a service book, besides the fact it's pretty high in materials and it does those neat tricks that are not cheap to make, is the fact that Microsoft does not want to directly compete with or put the PC makers out of business. Those folks are their customers, the HP, Dell, all those other companies, Asus. So what they do is they make really high-end aspirational hardware that's priced above what most people who are shopping with Dell, HP, Asus, Acer, and all that are going to buy. And eventually they hope that their designs and their ideas trickle down when the technology has become more affordable, which we've seen already happen with the Surface Pro line, for example. There are a lot of clones out there now, a lot of variations, a lot lower prices available. So there's the other reason for that high price tag. Both of these are essentially non-user serviceable and non-user upgradable. Now that's not unusual when you have something that's just a tablet here, because tablets are usually sealed devices. So not easy to open this up. You're going to take it to Microsoft Store or send it to them if you don't live anywhere near if you ever want to have this serviced. Hopefully you'll never have to. They're pretty well made. Uh, the hardware has been pretty reliable on these, so don't foresee that happening, but you can't upgrade it. You can't upgrade the RAM. You can't upgrade the SSD. All this stuff soldered on the motherboard. Well, Apple has gone the same way, too, with the Mac. At least before, they had a proprietary SSD, but it was removable. Now you can take off these Torx T5 screws and see that everything is soldered on the motherboard on this. So anything Thing that needs to be done, be it uh, an upgrade for an SSD to a higher capacity or, or any servicing of any part means replacing the motherboard. So they're both in the same unfortunate boat there. Both of these can support multiple monitors. Surface Book can drive multiple 4K displays at 60 hertz. The MacBook Pro can do to 5K displays. 5K has been a big marketing thing for Apple. They want to say they support the highest resolution. 
if that, I'll leave that up to you as to whether that's important and whether you can afford that 5K display. Right now, there's an LG display that Apple is selling that is 5K. It's around $1,000. Your average 4K, pretty nice quality display is four to $500. So I suspect people are going to lean towards more affordable, but some of you may want that really high-end 5K display. It's certainly attractive to look at. So the obvious pros for the Surface Book, like I said, if this is useful to you, it's a two-in-one. You can use it as a tablet. It has a touch screen. It has a pen. You can use it for note-taking, for vertical market stuff, for art, all that kind of thing. We got that down. Surface Book has higher resolution cameras and front and rear cameras, while the Mac has a 720p front-facing FaceTime camera. That's it. Again, I leave that up to you as to how important that feature is. The Surface Book has NVIDIA, and this is a performance-based one we're talking about, the high-end one, the NVIDIA GTX 965M with 2 gigabytes of DDR5 VRAM. That generally outperforms the AMD Radeon that is in the new 15-inch MacBook Pro. Also, you get better program support, both in games, which you may or may not be interested in, but it's, it's worth talking about there. And I mean, today's you know, cutting-edge AAA titles, that sort of thing, you can actually play these on the Surface Book. In fact, you'll see a comparison of Fallout 4 soon on both of these. But you get better application support in all of the Adobe CC apps. They've done a great job with NVIDIA graphics acceleration. Not so much with, with AMD graphics on the Mac. So if you're into the whole Photoshop CC suite, whether you're using Photoshop, you're using Premiere Pro, those things, you're actually going to see better performance, relatively speaking, on the Surface Book. Aha, uh -huh, the Mac fights back with the quad-core CPU. But we'll get to the pros for the Mac in, in a moment. Compared to the Mac, the Surface Book has a lot of currently useful ports and an SD card slot. You have two USB-A ports, for example, a display port. It, it used to seem like not the most impressive in terms of ports, but suddenly it does. Mac, of course, has just USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports, and they both have a headphone jack, of course, too. Surface Book's a little bit lighter, 3.6 pounds versus 4 pounds. I don't think that's meaningful, honestly. You get a higher resolution, resolution display on the Surface Book. It's 3,000 by 2,000 pixels. And it's also higher PPI, too, because it's in a 13.5-inch display size versus 15.4-inch. So pixel density is... 267 ppi versus 220 on the Mac. A little bit sharper? Sure. The Surface Book has an absolutely lovely keyboard. Most people enjoy it quite a bit. Plenty of key travel, 1.6 millimeters. And well, it's normal. So if you just want a normal keyboard, there it is. It has normal key travel, that sort of thing. And the trackpad is excellent. It's one of the best Windows trackpads. And it's large, but a normal size. The Mac has the controversial butterfly keyboard with the dome switches, only 0.5 millimeters, a half a millimeter of travel. Uh, and it's sort of almost like typing on glass in terms of the impact against your fingers. Of course, the switches do click and move, and you can type accurately enough on it, but I would suggest you try one in the store. And it has the humongous, crazy humongous trackpad, which feels just kind of weird because your palms are always resting on it when you type, even though the palm rejection is pretty good. I don't see why the trackpad is as big as it is. Also, the Surface Dial is supported. Now, actually, any PC can work with the Surface Dial, but the Surface Dial is going to work on screen with a firmware update in 2017. So you can use it and see the radial menus on screen, or, of course, you can use it on the desk. So you've got a touch strip versus this Surface Dial. The Surface Dial is great for things like zooming, rotating, that sort of thing. Again, more for the graphics folks than anybody else, though. So how about on the Mac side for the pros for the MacBook Pro? The Mac has four cores versus two. They're both Core i7s, but it's a 45-watt four-core CPU in the MacBook Pro. And you've got just a dual-core 15-watt CPU in Surface Book. So obviously, if you're doing things that require CPU-intensive calculation, the Mac is the machine for you because, well, it's got twice the cores to throw out the problem. When it comes to graphics, not so much. I'm going to throw up a benchmark, and you can see for yourself. The, the CPU-dependent benchmarks, for example, Geekbench is a, just tests the CPU. Uh, and PC Mark is a mix, but it, it, it really favors CPU somewhat and SSD speed. You'll see that anything that's CPU-based, well, the MacBook Pro is going to be faster. Anything that's graphics, including gaming, the Surface Book will be the faster one. And while I'm talking about SSD speeds, of course, Macs have the fastest SSDs. We have PCIe NVMe SSDs, which are the fastest kind available in both of these, but, well, the Mac is just faster. Does that make that much of a difference? Unfortunately, not so, so much. I mean, unless you do lots and lots of file copies constantly or use programs that do lots of caching, 
mm, yeah, fast beyond a certain point, most people won't notice. But we never complain about getting faster speeds. The Mac starts with 16 gigs of RAM. It also maxes out at 16 gigs of RAM. The good news is it starts at 16 gigs. Surface Book performance base, I find a little insulting that it starts at 8 gigs of RAM. For that price tag, come on. Give me 16 gigs. It also maxes out at 16 gigs. That's the most that you can get on it. And I think Microsoft really wants you to start throwing in some money on some upgrades and stuff like that, which I don't much appreciate, honestly. The Mac has the touch bar. It may not be the most ergonomic, fancy, wonderful new way to interact with your computer that Apple might have hoped, but it's useful, it's fun, and it's kind of innovative. So a Mac has the touch bar. Mac OS itself, very lovely, generally very stable. And these days, you know, there's just no viruses for the Mac. There's adware and malware, though. You do have to watch out for that. If you drive by an infected website, you might be tricked into installing Adobe Flash Player, which really isn't Adobe Flash Player. It's a, it's a boatload of crap that's going to put adware or malware on your Mac. So that's the only thing you have to worry about with the Mac, but viruses, no, not so much. Stability, yes. I would still say drivers are better quality on the Mac. You don't get all these little driver hoo-ha gotchas, you know, like what happened when Surface Book first came out, the older edition, a year ago. Oh, boy, were there driver problems. They're all fixed now, but now, Apple, they don't generally release products that have serious driver flaws. Obviously, you get a bigger screen on the Mac. You also get higher color gamut. 91% of Adobe RGB versus 76% on the Surface Book, so 15% more colorful. Honestly, in practice, they are both beautiful, very colorful, very color accurate displays that don't require a whole lot of calibration to get perfect. They both have higher than a thousand to one contrast ratio, so they're pretty close on that. Apple claims 500 and nits of brightness. And for the 13 inch, we actually saw that. For our, our 15 inch, I'm measuring 451. Surface books range up to about 400 nits. Uh, ours measured about 390 nits of brightness. So honestly, if you use these outdoors, that's going to make a difference more than anything else. Both of these are eye searingly bright to use indoors. But well, the Mac is the winner there for absolute brightness. The Mac is forward thinking, much as those USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports are a real pain in the butt right now because you need dongles, dongles, and more dongles and stuff. As sometime in the future, when everything actually has those connectors instead, portable hard drives, mice, keyboards, all those things, well, then it will be the bee's knees, won't it? It'll have so many of those ports, you'll be just thrilled with it. Now, when it comes to... Thunderbolt 3 and all that sort of thing, USB-C even. No, we don't have that at all on the Surface Book. I would have liked to have seen them revise it and throw that in there. Well, they, they kind of make it a little bit better by offering the Surface Dock. That dock is pretty cool. It gets more USB-C ports, two more display ports. I don't find myself wishing it had Thunderbolt 3 because the dock kind of gives me everything that I need. But when it comes to something like the famous or infamous Razor Core, the Thunderbolt 3 external GPU box, well, it wouldn't be able to take advantage of it. My, my gut feeling is I don't think we're ever going to see that happen on the Mac, certainly not under Mac OS, and even booting it into Windows, I, I really wonder if there's going to be, if it's going to work with that. But it's a possibility, and it's given the, the graphics on the Mac are kind of tepid, it certainly could use some help from something like that. Both of these have excellent speakers, really pretty loud and full given their size, but well, the Mac is a bit louder and fuller, so we give the point to the Mac on that one. I think you'd enjoy the speakers on either one of these, though. So there you have it, two very capable machines, um, and they're both obviously good enough for everyday work in MS Office and web kind of based work, if you're doing WordPress, that sort of thing, if you're streaming videos, and, and even if you're editing videos too. And you know, the, the thing that's positive for the Mac is Final Cut Pro. This may not be the best GPU in the house here in the Mac, but Final Cut Pro is so well optimized for the hardware and for Mac OS that it's pretty darn zippy and fast. So Final Cut Pro runs great on the 15 inch MacBook Pro. If you're into Adobe Premiere Pro, yeah, it, it could be better because the graphics acceleration isn't that great. I find it actually runs more fluidly, despite the fact there's only two cores on the Surface Book. It runs more fluidly on the Surface Book with performance base. Both of these are great for Photoshop, and Photoshop, honestly, these days is just not that taxing, unless you're somebody who manages to create a 50-layer design. Anything that's graphics intensive, including gaming, is going to be better on the Surface Book. Surprisingly, I thought the CPU could be a bottleneck for games. Sometimes it can be, but you can see when we demo Fallout 4 on both of these, 
at the same settings, 1920 by 1200 and medium, uh, that we're actually getting about 10 frames per second higher on the Surface Book. Imagine that, man, a convertible tablet that can game. So battery life, usually this is where Mac always wins. And this time, well, not so much because Surface Book is that ultra long energizer buddy. If you're using the base and the tablet together, i.e. in notebook form factor, since there are batteries in each section. Microsoft claims the performance base model will last up to 16 hours. And that's optimistic, it really is, but 10 to 11 hours is doable. Apple claims 10 hours, and in real world for light productivity work in both cases, seven to eight hours is what we've been averaging. So there you have it, the Mac versus the Surface Book. They're both beautiful machines. They both have fantastic attention to detail, lovely displays and all that sort of thing. But Obviously, the Surface Book is the more versatile. It depends on if you need that kind of versatility, if you want to use the tablet, if you want to use the touchscreen, if you want to use the pen. Those are the things in part that you're paying for with the Surface Book. With the Mac, you have a traditional laptop, no touching that screen, ain't got to do nothing for you, but you do get the, the touch bar. Yeah, it's not the most useful thing, but it's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of neat. And surprisingly, the Surface Book has the better keyboard or the more normal keyboard. For those of us who used to keys, it actually kind of move with a good amount of distance. Anyway, hopefully you understand the differences now and your decision's a little bit easier. Then you can watch our video reviews of each of these, read our written reviews, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of these cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you liked it.